Hola Alberto, ¿cómo estás? Welcome here. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. What, what time is in, you, you're in LA right now, right? Uh, I'm in San Diego, California. Oh, well, San Diego. It's uh, nine in the morning. Nine, nine, in, the nine in the morning. Okay. So uh, I see that you are from home, you are at home. So I guess that you are still working remotely, um, uh, even though you I just mean, started I, a new job. Right now, I, I just finished working yesterday. It was my last day in the office. That's so, true. That's true. But that's I mean, true. I think that that story will come later on how everything is going. Which oh, yeah. You have a, a, a you have a fun story, right? Like a no, fun. <laughs> crazy <laughs> fun story, I will say. Crazy, cra cra crazy, yeah, crazy fun story. That's that's so true. Just so you know, guys, uh, Alberto joined Architect US uh, a year and a half ago, right? Because if yesterday was your last day, that means 18 months ago. Exactly. Yeah, so he joined our team. Uh, he comes from the uh, Madrid Polytechnic uh, School, uh, the same architecture school I study at. So we are colleagues, Alberto. Uh, and um, well, regard. Yeah, regardless, uh, he was starting at, at his career. He was super successful in the uh, selection processes. He was part of our Job Plus Year One Visa program uh, that, as you may already know, we, we help landing a job in the U.S. and also, you know, assist with the paperwork, visa, and, and all, all those uh, barriers that kind of put you away from the US, uh, you know, at some point. And um, so Alberto uh, was an incredible uh, pool of uh, candidate. Uh, and, and I don't remember how many interviews you actually uh, had, but uh, it was pretty fast with you, right? Uh, I mean, I only had, I would say two interviews, but I will consider it only one because uh, my interview was kind of funny too. Uh, I thought I had it an interview, I mean, I was working, first I came here to Agency Architects, and I had it, an interview with Agency Architects, but I thought that it was for the San Diego office, but when I saw the name of the, I mean, usually before an interview, I always look in uh, LinkedIn or somewhere else, who are the people who are going to interview me to know more Good. about them. Good. Uh, so, when I was looking their names, I saw um, Arturo Levenfeld, uh, Sacramento principal in charge, and other pe people, uh, Sacramento uh, design leader. Like, I where am I going to? Like, yeah, well, uh, <laughs> okay, I will have the interview, and then during the interview, I asked them, mm, I imagine that you guys are right now in the Sacramento office. Um, yeah, I mean, I had an interview with them. I mean, it was pretty good. And I asked it, uh, yeah, I mean, I thought this uh, position, it was for the San Diego office instead of for the Sacramento one. I mean, if it's possible, I would rather uh, work in San Diego instead of here. And they say, okay, I mean, let's, I will, we will talk with, uh, we know the people in San Diego, we'll ask them if they have a position. So let us, I mean, we'll let you know. Um, one week later, I had an interview with a principal in San Diego. Uh, that was strange because it was like a phone interview, not even... Uh, That's true, days. because it was summertime. It's true, and, and I think that they were on holidays or something. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I had the interview, and the next thing I heard about it, it was like, oh, yeah, we are offering an... Uh, wow. So, I, I didn't... Yeah, I didn't even remember it was that fast with you. I mean, I remember that you, you know, we arranged only a couple of interviews for you because, you know, uh, you were really strong and, and you aligned with what uh, the companies were asking for at that moment. And But I didn't remember that it was just your only interview and, and, and you got the offer. And it's amazing that you actually could pick the location uh, because we had another another participant that we also interviewed uh, like a month ago or so, Arturo uh, Lopez de Ramo, and, and he moved to the Sacramento office. So that's that's great. And how do you remember actually that moment? Um, uh, let, let's 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 give them some some context and some kind of a background of your story. So, you finish um, architecture. Um, put them in in a timeline so we understand. Oh, yeah, I mean, so uh, more or less, I was studying in, in Madrid in, in the exam in architecture school in Madrid. As soon as I finished, 
I always had these uh, questions that what I want to do with my life. I was thinking between two, I had like two ways. One, it was like going to London where all my friends were working as an architect and they asked me, hey, come here, we'll live together. Uh, it's super easy. You can speak English. Or I, I was in Germany once visiting the country and I kind of liked it. And I said, why well, can't try to, to find a job here? Although I cannot speak German. So I started- Determination, to, that's, that's great, that's great. Yeah, and I, I, I remember I, I might send like, hundred uh, applications in Germany um, wow. and most of them the whole time they were like oh, yeah sorry but if you cannot speak German we can hire you sorry sorry and once they answer me and they say oh we want to have an interview your resume looks I mean good um, I reminded them yeah I cannot speak German is this is it okay but yeah no worries and uh, was the same thing had it only one interview with them uh, we I I don't know, I would say that we get along uh, each other. Uh, I moved to Germany, so I was working there in Germany for almost four years, learning German. Oh, wow, so, four years. Okay, okay, wow. I didn't remember uh, that from then, your resume. Then Amazing. after that, I, I have to say that I always I had it in mind. For a long time, I've been following Architect US. Uh, some of oh, the really? Meetings, but uh, how, how come? How come? Because you just opened Instagram. How, where, where did you follow us in? <laughs> uh, because I remember you, you, you had it some uh, like conferences in our school to begin with. Uh, you also had it the the YouTube channel that was open like way before yeah. Instagram. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That that's I true. Following. And I was super interested in trying the United States. But I I I, I tried by myself, but I never had a, a feedback, I mean, a response from any of the resumes or emails that I sent to a few months. Not ago. even, not even, not even like a thank you email? No. No, no, nothing. And <laughs> then when I, I decided to go for, I mean, Architect US, I have to say that it was super fast. I mean, first I asked it like six months ago, how is the process? And all of the, I remember I was talking to Pablo and Sonia and one of them, they, uh, gather all the information for me and oh those are the steps uh, those are the things that we will need usually it takes between two and six months to find someone and it always depends how picky are you because i mean no one forces you oh you have to take this offer it's like okay whatever you want uh, but also asking me where were my uh, like i mean what kind of architecture i was uh, I would like to do. It was more like in a big companies, like this corporate architecture, or more like in small boutiques. I remember all those questions during the process in order to to find like, okay, are you also more focusing interior architecture or or yeah. designing? We always so, try to learn from your real interest in order to <laughs> you know uh, provide you with better offers. Uh, thank that I mean uh, all the offers that you were offering me uh, was like aligned to what I wanted maybe the only thing is I, I had it in mind that I wanted to come to California because there is I, I would like to, to go on my path of sustainability um, like zero net to energy um, um, and this kind of green architecture uh, and I knew it that in California it's, it's one of the main things here. it's one of the it's biggest things yeah so, um, yeah, as soon as I got a, a job interview that was for agencies here in California, I said, okay, let's go for it. And, and it was success. So it was like that jump from Madrid to Germany for four years, and then here to San Diego for one and a half. That's, that's great. And, and well, it's imp quite, quite impressive, you know, career today because you're pretty young. But uh, um, I was, I was uh, just wondering how you uh, actually start dreaming about uh, working in the U.S. But you already said that it was like back in, in your years at school, I guess, that you always had it in your mind. And, and so you just um, kind of start the process of gaining international experience in, in Germany. This is, this is interesting because it seems like it's a, like a common feature, like all our participants somehow have that kind of international gene. Uh, they have always been pursuing that type of... Um, job job in, in in the side training you know uh and 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 well uh it's what you exactly said like you were determined you you sent 
thousands of well thousands hundreds of resumes to germany I'm, I'm i'm surprised that you know it was not that easy there and then you had it like super easy in the u.s normally it's not it's not it's not like that but um but how was your experience in in terms of doing the interviews because we get a lot of questions from from our you know potential participants asking how do i do this it will be through skype through a phone call um do i have to get on a plane to do the interview which is never the case and how you felt about it i mean i would say that there are like uh, two different ways and one as you were saying when you're looking from abroad or it was my case through a uh, uh, architects us I mean, the only way that you can do it is through a Zoom meeting, I mean, internet or a phone call in this case. I mean, always some of the tips that I will give is, I mean, and when you try to apply for a lot of firmas, uh, you might don't remember uh, which firma it is, uh, what do they do. So I think it's always what I have. I have like a spreadsheet. I was going to ask uh, about that strategy because you told us about specific strategy to follow. Uh, you followed, sorry, when, when you were looking for a job. So tell us a little bit about this. I'm sure that I, it will help the I people mean, watching. I, I did it when I was in Germany and I did it back here, uh, not uh, with Architect US because, I mean, you guys were like following also. I was always just taking notes for all the interviews and all the uh, positions or the positions that you sent me. But when I look for another job I, and I was here, I have like a spreadsheet with the name of studios, uh, location, uh, kind of architecture that they do. I mean, if they are like big firmas or small firmas, I always try to have like in notes, a couple of buildings or references about uh, that. And then always I go through all the web pages and try to see uh, what kind of position do they have. And I write what, position I'm applying for so I you don't mix them up I, yeah so I think it's good to have like uh, this kind of information I'll, at least uh, I forget a lot of things I'm not really good at but it's things, so. but it's not it's not even that I think that you're touching such a hot topic uh, that we're covering in a, in, in a different um, platform like in our blog as well like um, you know how you how you actually um, craft a perfect pitch when an interview time comes right and so it's not only a matter of you mixing up uh, positions or companies that you have applied that it looks terrible just so you know guys when you when you ask like oh yeah sorry yeah i'm super interested but by the way can you please just remind me what position was this because i applied to too many i don't know how come people can say that but we we, we when we are in 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 you know hiring uh people we we get that it's like do you really believe that we're gonna hire you <laughs> showing that kind of commitment and interest so is 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 that but just let me just let me finish with this and so you have a clear idea of who you are approaching but it's super important that you do this research you know you compile all this information that alberto was mentioning just because if you get the opportunity to actually interview with someone at a forum you want to have all those resources in your mind ready to build the conversation around it, to actually tailor your speech, uh, you know, when you're presenting your, pro your project or when you're talking about your uh, past um, experiences, you can tie those into, you know, what you're, what you're doing. So, um, so to, the, to the company. So that's, that's really important. Yeah, I mean, I also, I, I would point that, I mean, when you're doing an interview, you also have to show some kind of interest in the firma, and it's not like another firma that you are applying for. Uh, it's something, I mean, I think it's good, first of all, know who are the people who are going to interview you. I always ask, if they don't tell me, I'm going to ask, oh, who are going to be the interviewers? Uh, what projects have been doing recently? Um, what kind of architecture is the, is the firma is more focused in civic or healthcare, educational projects, uh, small projects like housing, only interior design. So they they notice that you really want to work for that firma. Exactly, exactly. And you really tailor because you know you might have um, gone through different type of projects uh, in your in your experience before, but you want to highlight those that actually align with the type of architecture they do, or with the type of projects they're doing, or with the 
job opening that they currently have. You don't want to just just throw all your you know experience with out of context. I mean, so it's very very important that you kind of start connecting with them, with their mission, with their understanding of architecture, how they you know even even the softwares. If you can get to to find out what what type of softwares they use uh, that will also give you you know an extra an extra information for you to kind of uh, highlight during the interview um, yeah and also i mean i know that when you are looking in front abroad it's not possible to be in person but at least uh, this last time that i was looking for a job i will say that uh, the success that it came in the last minute. I mean, uh, when I got most of my interviews is when you try to go in person to to an office. I know that it can s sound like an old school style, like print your resume, go in front of the office, just knock, I and mean, at least here in the States, I think they, they appreciate a lot when someone just have the initiative going in front of the office uh, to the secretary or like, oh, I would like to talk to the principal. I saw, I, I, I've seen that you uh, have like an open position. This is my resume. Uh, here it is. Uh, thank yeah. you. You can just have it. So uh, I That's know it's a great recommendation. Not possible. And also I had a lot of problems when I was looking for another job here because of the pandemic. A lot of firmas, they... They're not in the office. Yeah. In the office, they were from home. So I struggled a little bit uh, that. But I mean, if it's... Uh, I would say first, try to be in person. Try to show yourself and present yourself so they see, oh, this person is, is really interested. In, in, yeah. in position. It's not another email in a bunch of emails that they have in, in, their, in the computer. Yeah. So, somehow, yeah, somehow you have to, to show your uniqueness, right? And, and, and kind of position yourself as a very committed and determined person. That is going to set you apart from, from the rest in the pile but it's obviously it's obvious that you know uh, if you're trying to get a job in the u.s and you're based in india or i don't know in mexico uh you're not gonna jump in a in a plane to do that however we however we had a we had another participant uh who got a job also in la uh daniele dopresti uh who actually did that you know that's a, like an extra level you know for him it was like an absolute dream and he didn't know about us until he got the job already so he only needed us for the visa sponsorship but he was like oh my god if i would have known you i would have saved so much money because he literally saved money during a year or i don't remember how long but for quite a long time to just get in a plane uh land in la and knock as many doors as he could following also a strategy so you have um uh, similarities. He also had a spreadsheet with all that information. Um, even with the commuting times, I remember he was really good at you know calculating his resources, and and then uh, he got the job. So um, obviously you have to extrapolate this. Uh, and and but mm, the bottom line here is just to try to show somehow your level of commitment and interest that you are really eager to learn from them. No, I mean, that's the only thing that I would like to point it is, uh, I mean, nothing ha had to happen, but uh, legally, uh, it's not possible to do that. Uh, that's true. That's so very true. You cannot look for a job while well, you are, well, you are in, in a tourist business. Days, but, I mean, you can have a talk. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's always, I mean, some kind of bureaucratic things are, stupid because you can always talk with someone and it's not a job interview so, I mean, exactly exactly i mean so many so many people and we are not saying this so many people just travel to visit friends and no, just no. make the most of that I mean, trip to just submit in some in case anyone wants to the states thinking about okay i will look for a job please don't don't say that in customs <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> yeah no, no, not no, no, the, the no, no, you're absolutely right. Not only in customs, uh, even even if you are already holding uh, a visa, like the J-1 visa approved by the State Department, and you go to your embassy appointment and you just let them know openly that your interest is just to use the J-1 visa 
to actually get a long term work, they they might also you know deny your visa. So you have to, yeah, you have to be super clever, you know, and and follow and follow you know, the book, basically, but um, that is, that's exactly what we're here for, you know, try to, to overcome all those, um, you know, uh, obstacles, so you are within the legal frame, and you know that you are landing on a, on a proper job, and you have everything covered, but um, so let's go back to what you're saying, because um, just so you guys know, uh, as, as we said, Alberto landed in a job through us. I mean, we found him the, um, we arranged the interviews and we found him the job and the visa. But then, unfortunately, he was one of those, um, one of, uh, one, one, another case of, um, you know, someone that lost his job just because of the pandemic. Uh, even though HMC was, just so you know, they, they always rave about your work, like they were super happy uh, and, and they really tried to keep you as much as possible, but unfortunately they, 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 yeah, they lost a few large projects and they had to let you go. But uh, tell us about your experience looking for a job during the pandemic, I mean, uh, you, you kind of already explained a little bit, but how, how did it work? What was your feelings in terms of the responses uh, you were getting? I, I have to say, I mean, I just tried to follow the, the same strategies that I did when I tried in Germany or, or, or here in the States. And I already, luckily, I already had my spreadsheet with tons of uh, architectural studios here in the States. So I just went through all the names, trying to look which kind of open positions. But also at the same time, I have to admit that one thing that it's helping me a lot, uh, as soon as I start working here, is just trying to create to create this kind of net of people that you know, because some of the interviews that I had it, I had it because someone you knew someone like ex ex co worker. Ah, because I know an architect uh, here in LA or or here in this other part that he might have a job or they were. I mean, that's why also the people from agency, even my my principal in charge, he recommend me to some jobs. I mean, he was aware about my situation that I had to leave the country without a job. And he was also, he brought me a really good recommendation letter and he put me in contact with uh, other, I mean, either constructors, firmas or architectural firmas. And luckily they weren't looking for anyone, but this kind of net, I think that as soon as you land it here in the States, it's good to, to build it up because it's going to help you a lot. People know each other. I mean, people move from one firma to another firma and... Uh, Quite rapidly. Really yeah, that's one of the um, recommendations that we always give to new architect US uh, participants. Like as soon as you put a foot in, in the US, regardless you want to stay for longer or if you your plan is to move back, you never know. You never know. So you, you got to make sure that uh, you not only uh, pay attention to make a first good impression, but only, but also, sorry, along the way, you want to create friends within the company, uh, keep in contact with those who have left, uh, ask for a reference letter, you know, before you leave, um, leave always the door open. You never know if you're going to get back to that company or I don't know. And, and, and start, you know, uh, building that network, that professional network that is going to go with you for the rest of your life. I mean, um, I, I don't know how many times I've got help, you know, or I have helped friends from my first job, you know, 15 years ago in a studio. Oh, yeah, I don't hear you. Fun, oh. fun, fun, yeah, fun fact, uh, I would say that through one of my ex co workers, he told me. Oh, I know a, a Spanish architect from, from Madrid. I mean, when I first worked in Miami for, uh, I don't remember exactly which, uh, which company, uh, give me your portfolio, I will send it to him. You might get along. And it, it ended up that this person is, you probably know him, Miguel Quismondo. Oh my God, yes, of course I know and him. I, I, I ended up uh, having an interview with him. But, uh, he's based in New York. 
uh, we chatted and he was uh, asking me, oh, I see your performance. I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, and luckily I already hired someone else through a, a architecture I can tell you another per person from the O1 visa. But I mean, uh, we were talking. Uh, that's what I, oh, sorry. No worries. Someone was sending me a message and it would be mm -hmm. crazy. So. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, that's what I mean. I mean, I, 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 I met someone that also was uh, here uh, in the G1 program. And he, yeah, it's going to end up, he's going to help me with one of the recommendation letters for my home visa. Awesome. Like an independent expert. Yeah. Uh, that will judge my career. But just the the fact that I, an ex coworker from HNC knew it's someone who they were working together maybe 25 years ago. Uh, yeah, because, uh, yeah, Miguel Miguel landed on a J1, but now he's a citizen, but he landed uh, in Miami. He worked there years ago. I, I, it was a big firm. Um, I don't remember now. Uh, Purpose, don't on remember. Wheel, Purpose on Wheel. Purpose on Wheel or... Purpose on Wheel could be. Well, yeah, it was a big one. But then he moved to New York. I mean, it's funny because I, I don't know if you know, but he uh, he uh, has been working for Alberto Campo Baeza, uh, uh, you yeah, know, projects. In yeah, yeah in, in Upper State New York. And well, as you can see, guys, uh, it's, it's true that obviously Alberto and I were Spanish. We actually studied at the same university. So it's, it's, it, it, it makes sense that we have, you know, people in common. But this is actually just by chance. Like, you know, he's working in LA. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had someone uh, that I met through the program. Well, not through the program. So through my time living in New York, Miguel, and then became friends. And it's just like such a small world. You know, architecture is not like a... It's not the film industry, yeah, you know. So, uh, it's is you you have to be, and and don't take me wrong. We are not talking about being always like super business oriented. It's not that. It's just a matter of, you know, um, as when you walk in a I don't know in a in a in a club and you just want to meet people and enjoy and the, the same thing in a professional way. You just want to have your agenda full of you know. Uh, colleagues that uh, have different expertise from who you can learn from and from who you can and on who you can rely on at some point in your career like if you need a reference letter you know uh, uh, for the old one visa you have to tell us about this um, so going back to the selection process uh, sorry hiring process uh, you found a job at um, this new large friend sorry I, I'm cutting yeah, you off uh, this uh, yeah, this uh, firma, I mean, uh, I was for one month uh, sending resumes. Maybe the, the, the only problem is uh, I had some interviews. Um, most of the times the problem was like, oh, yeah, your resume it looks great, uh, uh, your background. But when the works visa came to some offices that they are, uh, if they don't know anything about G1 visas or O1 visas or anything that is related with work, they are reluctant. Firmas, they, they are afraid of it. And also, yeah, it's a pandemic situation. I, I might and empathize with them that some people don't want to risk anything right now. Also, they were interested in me. It's like, oh, but we cannot go through this process. So I always were saying like, you don't have to do anything. I will be in charge or, or I mean, but it was kind of complicated to, to convince them. But finally, like one, one week before I had it to, uh, to leave the country, I went to that studio, HGW. It was I, crazy. That was, I always remember, it was a Friday. On Monday, they called me to go on Tuesday. I had an interview on Tuesday in the morning. And I say, okay, as always, the interview was good. They were saying that they were uh, waiting for other people. I was thinking, okay, it's gonna be the same answer. Uh, no, we don't sponsor any visa. So Thursday, one week before leaving, I was about to sell my car. I mean, taking pictures uh, to sell my car through uh, I mean, any app. And I got a phone call asking me, oh, can you come to the office and explain us which is the process that we will need to, to, to do to hire you? Um, yeah, that's one week later, I did the first interview. I was just 
high. Yes. I mean, they offered me a position. So I started the whole process. I know I was a little bit rushed in a rush because I wasn't sure. I had some tickets I to leave the country. And I think oh, I you had already problem. bought, you had, to, you had got to buy the ticket already. So you were yeah, ready so to I leave. Mean, yes, to, I think it's, it was a loss, but in my opinion, it wasn't. I lost like thousand dollars of my plane because I till Wednesday, two or three days before my flight was, I didn't get a confirmation from the Spanish charter <laughs> um, from you guys that I could stay here. What I didn't want to do is to stay here yeah. longer. And of course, like, overstay. Because anything related with being here longer that I will recommend, don't do it because no. that can cause you problems forever. I mean, not even looking for another job, you may not be able to come to here. travel as a tourist. So yeah, 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 don't, yeah, definitely. Don't mess with immigration. I mean, just, uh, there are always other paths, uh, I would say. Don't, don't try to push or risk your situation because uh, it's, it's not worth it. It's because, not, uh, it's not. But that's, that's, that's crazy. I mean, uh, it's funny. I think that we should, seriously, I'm thinking about this seriously. We should uh, gather personal stories and experiences, uh, visa related or immigration related, because we could get like a, like a book or something. Everyone has a story. <laughs> Everyone that, that I actually had two different episodes. Like when my J1 was expiring, I literally got the HOK um confirmation my offer letter that the day before my visa was expiring because i was on a 10 on a 10 months visa uh, through a scholarship i got from this spanish ministry of education and i could extend it up to 18 months but obviously you have to have first the company you want to extend the visa for it. and so i got a confirmation literally the day before it was the expiration date to actually do the transfer. So that was the first time I was like, oh my God, this is it. And then the second time, I was literally similar story than yours that um, I had already sold all my furniture. Uh, I had left my apartment. I was staying already in a friend's and because I was applying for the old one visa and it seemed it was not, you know, happening, like they were not giving me the answer. So I was just thinking, okay, I'm not going to get it. And so I remember traveling to, I was living in New York. So I traveled to uh, Washington because I had never visited. And it was just with my bike by myself. It was like a two days trip by myself just to visit the city. Um, and it was literally in front of the uh, Lincoln Memorial. And all of a sudden I got an email from the HOK director. Uh, they were trying actually to transfer me to the Dubai office or the Hong, uh, yeah, Hong Kong office, uh, you know, in, in the event I couldn't get the, um, the visa. Yeah. And so the HR manager uh, sent me a, an email. She totally knew that I had my flight, I had left the apartment, sold all my furniture. I mean, I was done, right, with New York. And so she, she sent me an email saying, I would never forget this. Oh, darling, look at the attachment. And I was like, what is this? I was thinking that it was going to be an interview with the Dubai office, or I don't know. Uh, and then I opened the attachment, and then I saw United States of America. Da, da, da. It was my own visa. I mean, look, I, I get my my uh, goose cam, so what is the word? Because I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this. I mean, what am I going to do now? I have to start all over again. So it seems like it's a common, it's a common situation, I, right? I, like I, I will say that some, sometimes you... You just have to try till the end. I mean, you. I know that sometimes you get success or not, but if you don't try it, you, you won't have luck. I mean, uh, totally true. you won't find, I mean, those opportunities. Those last minute opportunities is because if you keep trying till the last minute, it might happen. I you mean, and if you just give up, so it's not going to happen 100%. Totally. But also uh, for me, what it, it, it drives me at that moment, it was, it's going to be me who decides when I leave this bloody country. You know, I'm not going to say a bad word. Oh, when, uh, it, a it's going to be me. It's not going to be the system. It's not going to be immigration because I have a job. I have a company that loves me, that they really want to keep me, that they're doing anything they can to keep me. So I'm going to try all what I can, all my best to make it possible. And then I decide because I, I, at that moment, I didn't even know I want to stay or not. I don't know about you. I guess that you were just trying all your, you know, uh, options and, and then you were going to decide. So. So, yeah, I mean, right now uh, I, I just got that job and I explained it that 
I will be able to work for one month, then I will stop for another month until I get my O1 visa, which I'm in, in, in process right now. And then I, I will work again. And every time that I tell that story, I was thinking, no one is going to hire me. Who's going to hire a person for one month and then another month is going to take You have to be really days. proud. That You have to be really proud of you. Um, that means that, you know, they really like you. I mean, I'm, uh, I, I like, I mean, I, it's a really nice office. It's a local San Diego office with uh, really good projects focusing in green buildings and sustainable materials, lead, uh, uh, trying to get for all the buildings like a lead certification, but it's also something that I, I you were interested to grow up. Uh, so yeah, I mean, are you uh, green associate or are you AP? Uh, right now, I, I did my exam like uh, three months ago to get the lead green associate. Uh, oh. be, Accreditation, first, yeah. I mean, the first step that you need in order to try to apply to the lead AP. Yeah. Which I, I will try to specialize in building construction design. That's uh, what I did. Hmm. So I mean. That's something that I, I, I really wanted to do. Like, yeah, I, was, I came here to California to learn more about sustainability, the uh, cradle to cradle uh, uh, architecture. Um, yeah, it's, it's the path. And, and, and that's amazing that you're just accomplishing, you're checking every box, it seems like, you're right? Uh, it's, it's, it's really inspiring. And, and I was going to say, like, um, you know that the lead accreditation is 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 uh, spread it up, uh, you know, worldwide. Even though in the U.S. and in England as well, in the U.K. is is pretty strong, um, and it's very important uh, for companies, large companies, to have that kind of um, prestigious stamp in their projects. But um, have you actually uh, tried to become lead accredited before landing in the U.S. or this is something that you just learn about when you when you arrive? I, I I was thinking about it uh, before I came here. I, I think I had it on my goals. Also, it was one of my goals when I was in, in HMC Architects. They always uh, uh, ask us to set up like uh, five goals. Career goals. Year. So, uh, but no goals, I mean, goals that they are like related with the, maybe with the office or the architectural field in, in order to improve your performance in the office. But Uh, most of them like related to grow yourself as an architect but before that also when I was working in Germany that uh, uh, German uh, office uh, they were also focused in cradle to cradle architecture which is not exactly sustainable it's another path I mean uh, way farther like trying to reuse materials that like uh, sage uh, 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 bricks from an old building saves uh, uh, materials or, or uh, plastics, nets, uh, whatever you can find uh, to, to keep using it in a building. So it's not e even trying to make a green building, but some people think they have a lot of plants on your building. That's not, I mean, the, the most sustainable building to begin with that you learn is not the one who uh, uh, is the greener, is the one who use less resource. Even during the construction, uh, during the whole life cycle, so the most efficient is your building, the greener. So exactly. Uh, sometimes that efficiency comes with uh, what is better to buy materials that they have to be shipped from uh, Asia, or local materials like oh, we have a, a forest here, so we can get extract wood. So let's think about a wood framing uh, building instead of a concrete or steel structure. Uh, what do we have locally here? So you also, the products that you get are from the local community or economy. So you mm -hmm. are pushing and, and supporting them. So there are a lot of things related with this kind of sustainable green and cradle to cradle architecture that I, I was uh, really into when I was in Germany. Uh, when I came here in California, it's all, almost the same because, for instance, you were talking about this lead accreditation here in, in California, any governmental building, I mean, uh, any state building from the state of California must to have be lead, I mean, uh, need to be at least, I'm not sure it's just the lead certification, which is the minimum, or lead silver. 
But yeah. That's something that if you don't have uh, lead architects in your firma, it's complicated to afford. And and exactly, but uh, that is that is why it's, it's actually a great asset to have in your in your curriculum if you can, you know, because companies in order to get them um, from what I remember, in order to get your project certified uh, as lead um, in in the in the different levels it has, you have to comply with a few well, uh, different parameters, right? And one of the uh, the criteria is that how many lead accredited professionals you have in the team so they you know the the the, the project gets more points if you have you know 80 percent or 100 percent or 50 percent uh people in your team with lead accredited so that's actually it's like if you know um, two softwares as opposed to know five obviously you're going to be more valuable as the more versatile you are right in terms of communication skills and graphic skills well same thing with this in the u.s uh be a, a lead um architect or design professional uh is is important so that that could be something you can think of um you know investing uh when when you if you are thinking about moving to to the us but just so you know i don't know if it was your case or not you got the lead uh the lead exams while you were working for hmc or it was um I don't remember it was right before I was laid off or a week after that. I but mean, I mean, I they, studying. they pay for they, that, they, right? You know, they, they invest uh, on you. Yeah, I mean, they, they paid me the exam. Yeah, I was just going to say they, they, reimbur they reimburse me the, the, the money of the exam because some, some firmas, they really want to uh, like get your uh, architectural license here in the States or, or leave the Green Associate or anything that improves uh, the their staff. Themselves. Yeah. Their staff, uh, any learning, training courses that you can do, they used to reimburse you. That, that is one of the things that I. I love one of the things I love the most while I was uh, working in, in New York, like they really invest in you. They really want to, I mean, even though it's a business thing, you know, uh, and they're going to benefit from that. It doesn't matter, you know, because at the end of the day, they are investing on you for you to get your, uh, you know, um, study uh, resources, uh, you know, get exams, um, get all, all what you need in order to accomplish the accreditation. So, and it's not only the lead and the ARES or the uh, licensure exams, that those are really expensive actually. I mean, if you start, um, you know, paying yourself for that, it, it, it's quite a lot of money. But also you can benefit from lunch and learnings, uh, trainings, like, right? Um, what was your experience with, with that? I think that that is pretty, pretty awesome from uh, the way they work. I mean, now in the, I always have to, to say that it's not the same when you work like for a corporate or a bigger firma as I was doing uh, for NTGC at the beginning, but now, now it's like a small uh, architectural office, I mean, 20, 25 people. That's been the size. The one, they, they, they had it like several offices, so it was easier for them to set it up, like you were saying, lunch and learning, in which they, someone in the office tried to just share their knowledge in someone else or directly like I remember to have some trainings about uh, Rhino, Dynamo, using for Revit, uh, Revit itself, uh, what else, uh, I remember, uh, SketchUp, uh, sometimes is, uh, I remember we had it at uh, training for uh, how things related with construction administration, like uh, how to answer, how to proceed with a, a request for information in era five, uh, or how to uh, do things during, I mean, the design development, or just how to prepare a budget. I mean, yeah. Uh, for yeah. Project, no one uh, has that done that in, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But they, they try because it's something that one day you will have to, or, one day, if you need to create a 3D, the, the fact that you know how to use Rhino or Enscape, it's going to help them. Uh, or if you are in the construction administration, the fact that you can lead by yourself, another person can keep doing all this stuff, so they don't need to have like three people in this. 
they're, they're very, they're very um, efficient, efficiency oriented, I guess. Like they really want to have like, a, you know, a, a chain of uh, different duties or assignments covered by their team. So they're, they're very clever. Uh, the system is, 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 is meritocratic. I mean, we have said this uh, many times uh, already in different interviews. Like uh, if you prove yourself, you're going to get a reward, you know, uh, professionally wise right uh, like even if it's if it's a race or uh, a responsibility i mean something you're not gonna feel like oh my god i'm just working for nothing uh you know i, I never feel like um i'm rewarded or, or, or people um kind of appreciate my work or my commitment that doesn't happen in the u.s i mean you're always gonna get uh that uh kind of um yeah recognition that, that, that you deserve because of your hard work. Yeah, something that I, I noticed here in the States and being in other countries, I mean, I'm, I don't want to, uh, like, say anything bad from the other countries, but here in the United States, I just realized that no one cares where are you from, what can, at least that you can speak English half, or, I mean, properly, they, they don't care. If you are, uh, uh, I mean, if you're committed with your job and you are doing well, I mean, and uh, you work hard, I remember they asked me one day, hey, do you want to go to uh, construction, I mean, do construction administration of this kindergarten that we are building? I said, yeah, I mean, it's going to be nice. I mean, I've never been there and I'm going to learn a lot. And then uh, it then did happen that the person in charge there, it was getting retired. So I ended up being in charge of the construction administration. In my, Wow. The first time that I was on the side and I said, I have no idea I'm to be here. Yeah, but the opportunity was there for you, right? So you grasped oh, it. The opportunity was there and I learned a lot because the, the person who was there, I mean, getting retired, he was moving to Boston and he told me, oh, Alberto, you have me any problem, just call me on my phone and I will help you. I mean, if they are asking you about any change, you say, no, oh, we, we were studying it, call me, we will talk about it. And, I mean, any doubt that you have, I will, I will train you in you. But the, the fact that they gave me the chance to, to be on a construction site, I, was, I think it was like four months or five months after being hired. Like I, I was only in the office for five months and they said, no, oh, you, you can do it. No worries. I mean, you will learn a lot. Um, they, they trust you a lot. They, You're making me feel to... jealous, you know. You're making me feel like I want to go back and work there again. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Kayo. <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, maybe the, the only thing that I was happy is that all this time, uh, as you say at the beginning, uh, I was working from home. So I only had the chance to work with uh, my co workers face to face for two, two and a half months. I think. That, might, that, that must have been tough, right? I mean, uh, it's, it's tough because uh, I don't know, I, I wasn't. Uh, um, I've never been working from home, so no one, no uh, one has. It's it's different. Um, I knew people who used to work remotely, but it's not the same because working from home means you're working and sit up uh, in front of your computer at home eight nine hours. Working remotely means that you can take your computer and go to a cafe. Is that is it slightly different? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, know, yeah. I mean, the fact that I was spending like almost 18 hours or, or more a day or, or a whole day at home because yeah. I sleep at home, I work at home, I eat at you home, eat at home. And, and then it was a pandemic, you couldn't go anywhere. So uh, yeah, I think it was tough for everyone. I mean, yeah. it was a point which all the coordination, not even with our firmas, with uh, our consultants, engineers, uh, constructors, constructors uh, owners, um, everything through Zoom, Microsoft Teams uh, was tough and complicated a little bit. Uh, did you did it, you did it, you did it, yeah. And so right now, because um, we have to start wrapping up just so people understand, um, 
it's just incredible seriously albert it's just incredible that you got a job uh you know uh having only one month left in your visa actually explaining up front that if they want to keep you for longer uh they have to sponsor you for uh the old one visa that we we're going to talk about right now and 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 all that happened all that work and so they actually um decided to move forward with your own one, right? So you're in the process of... Um, yeah, I mean, right now I'm... Uh, I'm submission or...? Almost uh, add my ideas, trying to submit it like in the next two weeks. Okay. So, I mean, at the middle of June, I mean, the end of the second week of June, uh, beginning of the week of June. So, and I've been working for it like this month and a half, yes. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's always complicated because you have to go to work and then keep working on your visa. It's not the same when when I was talking with uh, Jack. I mean, the, the attorney that you guys recommend us. So I think yeah, it's really good. He he he's been working with architects and he really knows how to focus, uh, what kind of things are valuable and which other are not, and try to guide you pretty well. Uh, I mean, I mean, the main point is try to grant you a, a normal visa. So he also tried to push us a little bit, like, can you get something else? Can you get this other thing? That I mean, he's, he's specialized in the open visa for architects. It's not that he, yeah. he knows about the open visa in general. That's the reason why we are recommending all our participants who are interested in pursuing the open visa to, to take in with, the, with, with him and his team, just to see if you're actually eligible because he won't, he won't move forward and, and, and play with your expectations if he doesn't believe that you're going to get it. So that's actually a good starting point. Uh, because you know uh, with the old one visa well with any any visa at the beginning you feel lost you know you don't know what are your real odds um how you can approach to a specific criteria you know in the list of the things that you have to put together so it's, it's great that you're having that his support um but um so how, how does it work in terms of um you know the time from yesterday that you end your j1 visa until you get the old one you are like in in i don't know in a in a void uh you you run out of a status no you you're completely legal right you, you just have uh, to wait i mean I'm, I'm legal because after my my visa uh, ended like yesterday by working so legally i cannot work so I, i'm not going to the office not touching anything we talk uh, together like the only thing that i told them and i was working in in a really nice project in the safari here in, in san diego and I was working creating the Revit model. It's uh -huh. a building that there is non straight walls, so all the walls are like waves. So wow, really, uh, really cool. Uh, I just uh, let them know my email in case they need any help. Like, oh, of course, of course, so, of course, of course. But no, they, they are aware, they are also helping me because they, they have to sign some papers, uh, give me like a three years uh, uh, roadmap or kind of plan for yeah. the visa. They, they so, committed. I mean, the, the O-1 visa has nothing to do with the J-1 visa in that regard. Like, they, they, they really signed for a commitment with you, a long-term commitment, like for three years. Obviously, things uh, go wrong, you know, they can terminate you, but it's, it's a... It's a is 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 a um, great commitment from both ends. So it's it's incredible that you got it. The thing is, uh, when you finish your new one visa, you always have like uh, uh, your thirty days uh, grace period. The Correct. This year, so as long as I submit within that thirty days my old one visa, uh, this, uh, I, I I can stay here till I get a response from immigration. So if you submit uh, an application for a visa, a change visa status or a new visa, you always have, and you are already here in the United States, uh, you can always stay here no longer than six months till you, you get a response. Correct, so, that is correct. I mean, usually that response doesn't take longer. That's oh no, the 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 O1 visa is pretty fast. It, it, it can be. I mean, you can always go with the expedite service, like with any That's other visa. Yeah, you have to pay extra, but I mean, it's worth it if you are tight 
you know, uh, okay. with time. Uh, in, in my case, it might sound uh, stupid, but uh, every week that I'm not working, I'm not uh, making money. money. No, so, you're absolutely right. You're uh, clever. The fact that I might have to pay thousand or fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, it paid off. If I if I if I don't have a, a response in one month, I losing like six thousand or seven thousand. So at the end, if you do the numbers, I'm earning. I mean, I'm yeah. making money. Exactly. So, exactly. Uh, some, sometimes I always will say that there are things like the O1 visa or the G1 visa. In that case, when you start doing all the process that you think it's a lot of money, the one that I have to spend in one. But if you start to look at it like in long terms, uh, I would say it's like a, an investment in yourself. Like, um, not even if, if I cannot stay here because anything happened with the O1 visa, I mean, I, I don't want it, but if, if anything happens, all the experience that I got during this one year and a half, it's gonna help me to find a better job in either any other country or try to come back here again just already having experience in two different companies so i always you're absolutely right that, uh, i mean for people who are thinking about to go to this program uh, that year and a half either if you can stay longer or not uh, it's gonna open you a lot of uh, opportunities i mean no matter how is uh, you end up i mean i there are people who want to stay longer and they can but anyway uh, you will have easier chances uh, to come back when you already been working one year and a half totally it opens up so many new avenues for you uh and you never know where it's gonna take you next just by the fact that you have experience in the u.s but just so you know we have actually uh, a few uh, former participants that I, I call them family members just because they were here, you know, they, they were our first participants in the program, meaning back in 2016, that they're still in the U.S. Yeah, they were the first, the first participants and they started literally their professional career in the U.S. They decided that they want to stay, so they follow exactly the same path that you're following and I did <laughs> it was supposed to be for 10 months and I stay over five years as well same thing I landed with a J1 I extended to 18 months then I transferred to the O1 then I got the H1B as well so if I would have decided to stay HOK was offering me the green card as well so it's a matter of you starting a career a professional career in the U.S. so if you want and, and, and you know where you want to go uh, next and you have a clear roadmap you know, uh, 100% is going to work unless a pandemic and a crazy thing happens. But I mean, um, Alberto, it's been amazing. I could keep chatting with you. I think it's been super, super interesting, very insightful. Um, again, you must be really, really proud of all your accomplishments in just a year and a half. Um, I don't know where you're going to go next. Maybe you are the, the future Arturo Levenhel, you know, uh, and, and, oh. and, and you become someone, you know, an important big fish in, in your company uh, in five years' time or whatever. I think the same first thing I want to do right now is wrap it up my own visa, submit it and try to have some relaxing holidays are they of course I, of I course have to admit that these last three months they've been a little bit crazy for me. you've gone through a lot you should go to hawaii you should go to hawaii or something like that uh, just to celebrate or, i mean i live here in san diego so i just have to go to the beach which is that's true you don't really you don't really need go to the salt institute uh you know to I've celebrate i've been there i mean it's beautiful i know it's i it was the last place I, I went to before the pandemic you know in my last trip I went to LA I actually met everyone um, at HMC but in the Ontario office the headquarter oh, yeah. I think it is like the, the big one, yes. yeah and I travel uh, all the way down to you know Salt uh, Lake Institute I didn't get to San Diego uh, but uh, it was the same day we were traveling back uh, back to Madrid and I, I, I really risked it just because I want to see the, 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 the building the institute it was <laughs> Blow, blow mining, amazing, amazing place. I mean, yeah, one of my favorite uh, masterpieces. But anyway, thank you so much. You know, one one thing that I might invite you over um, in the next month, 
in the next month because I'm sure that you're going to get the old one. I'm sending you all my energy and, and, and just based on how hard you work and, you know, how clear you have your goals in, in, in your path, I'm, I'm sure that you're going to get it. So I'm already thinking that we might uh, organize like a get together with other O1 visa holders. So you, you know, exchange ideas and people can learn from, from your experience because the old one is, is, is a, is a, um, it's an um, important, or it's a different story, right? I mean, it's a difficult uh, visa to get. And, and so I'm sure that you will be very insightful for, for the um, architects. Um, oh my God, someone is speaking in a, in a language that I don't understand. But, uh, but anyway, um, you guys can email us all your questions. Uh, you know, the, the chat with uh, Alberto was so interested, uh, interesting that I didn't really pay attention to, to the comments, sorry. Candidates from other countries than Spain? Of course, of course. Our, actually, uh, our community is made of 33 different countries from the last report, I believe. So we have people coming from Hong Kong, Brazil, Canada, Spain, I don't know, France, anywhere in the world. Um, um, you know, as long as you, you you're good and you're determined and passionate about architecture, we will be more than welcome to, to work with you guys. Um, so Alberto, thank you, thank you again. Um, it's been lovely. No, no, my pleasure. I, I cannot wait to hear what happens with the old one. So please keep us posted. Um, I, I really hope you get it. And Arturo is also in the, in, you know, in the process. We have many, yeah many friends and colleagues in, in the architectural family trying to get it now. So fingers crossed. I really hope you get it. I mean, thank you very much. And I also, I mean, I, I, I animate anyone to try to go through this program. I mean, for sure. I mean, it's totally worth it, in my opinion. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This was not planned, okay? This was not planned. He was just trying to be nice and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And, um, Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. 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 Oh, okay. Okay. You guys have questions. So let me just type here where you can. Well, I'm going to just give you Sonia. She's going to kill me because I'm giving her email directly, but she's the best you can. Oh, sorry. I don't know how to type properly. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll try it one more time. So basically it's Sonia Sanchez, Sonia.Sanchez at architectus.com. I'm gonna just type it so you all have it. She's the senior program advisor, so she will redirect you to any other program advisor if she's busy, which is normally the case, but uh, there you go. Uh, you have it. Uh, so. Oops, Alberto, we lost him. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you all um, for being with us today. And uh, I really hope to see you in the next interview series. Okay, send us your questions and we will uh, definitely assist you with, with all of them. Okay, thank you. Have a great one. Bye-bye.